Okay, great. Um, I was just asking Sinsen to um, uh, talk a little bit of background of uh, the assignment we gave Sinsen to. Uh, hold on, let me get Lucian in. The assignment we gave Sinsen to develop a formal uh, PDF or Word doc resume that uh, a Build It Yourself member could submit to a college if they didn't want to submit the Playful Planet, a link to the Playful Planet. Um, and so um, uh, I thought we'd start open the meeting by uh, having Sinsen report on what her, uh, her recommendation is. And it's relevant because we need to capture this information in the lab view uh, in order to display it on her formal um, sort of resume or portfolio um, format. Hi, Lucian. Hi, Lucian. Uh, how are you doing? Welcome, good, good, glad you could join. Okay, so um, Sinsen, could you uh, tell us a little bit about what you learned, why, what, um, from this project and what your conclusions are. Maybe you can share your screen and, and show us the format uh, you came up with. A little bit of background about why you chose this format. Did you see some, did you see some examples or? Uh, okay, I guess I can like share my screen. Yeah. Um, okay, so I basically just looked at a lot of examples of people's resumes um, and I did some research on like typography and things like that, but mm -hmm. this is kind of what I came up with. I noticed that most people had like obviously their name at the top and then um, their education and contact information and skills and then they also had relevant experience. Yeah. And then this is the second part with the portfolio. Yeah. So I came up with two options. Like it could kind of look like this, like each project has these, um, this information and also a couple of images. And this was another option. Okay. Um, and yeah, in terms of the things that might need to be put into a lab view, um, can you see what I'm sharing? Or? I can see the Word doc. Okay. And then this morning I asked you to make a list of data we need to capture in the lab view that we aren't already capturing in order to execute your template. Mm -hmm. So um, I noticed in the lab view, there was already a space under each project for description. Mm -hmm. So I went into a little bit more detail on like what might go in there, um, but that's kind of up to the user, I guess. And then I thought under the like projects, project name, mm -hmm. there could be like just a space for the project dates. And then that would be for the portfolio section of the PDF. And mm -hmm. then for the resume section, um, I was thinking that we could include information about like education. So an yeah. input field for their school yeah. And then also for their um, relevant experiences. Okay. Oh, I'm not really sure where we would put that, but it would be cool if there could be a place for them to um, put in their relevant experiences and then the dates and then also a description. Great, great. Okay. Um, anyone want to comment quickly on this page? I have a few thoughts, but before I prejudice anyone, this is information we need to capture beyond what's already on, what we're already capturing. Okay, my thoughts are school should definitely be in there, school and hometown. Um, and I thought that was in there. At one time that used to be in the bio, but maybe it, it got uh, taken out. Um, so school slash um, city. Should, should we should capture that. With respect to skills, 
the idea was to capture that in the skills page. So we have a specific page in LabVIEW uh, to say whether you're a guru, a rookie, or a or um, apprentice in various skills. And then with respect to uh, project description, um, I think it's nice to have a format, but I hesitate to drive kids to fill out, you know, ten different fields and make it almost robotic. I think it's nice if we make some suggestions and then let them be creative and they can tell a story about their project any way they want. They can either list it in bulleted items or they can tell a story or, um, you know, think it's nice if they're uh, more creative about the way they present their project. Any other inputs to Sinsin's uh, proposal here? Lucian, there's not that much extra information we need to capture here, I don't think. Yeah, a lot of this is captured in the lab view, um, at least with the new spec yep. as it is. Yep, yep, okay. Michael, do you see any red flags here? Or do you see, how about the application in general, the, the feature in general? Um, we have a very playful planet, game-like planet, but then parents want to know that after four or five years, they'll have a formal resume that they could use in a college application. And some colleges may be interested in the planet, you know, the playful planet view, but others may prefer a more formal portfolio. Any thoughts when you um, were applying to MIT? I, I think um, you have to take into account like the discrepancy between the age, the ages of our users and Good point. Um, those that are applying to college. Good point. Uh, a lot of this detail is kind of more specific to older people yeah. when they have more fleshed out um, project descriptions. Whereas yeah. I feel like if you're under the age of yeah. 16, you're not necessarily considering all these bullet points. Right, right. So I think you should clarify yeah. um, that. Very I good. think it's not too hard to add these fields, but it's just yeah. like you said, um, depending on who's using Invention Universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't want to force kids to fill out, you know, 20, 20 fields. Um, and, and when they get to, okay. All right, since then, let's take these comments offline. And um, um, well, I, I, I like a lot what you've done here. Uh, so good work. Okay, um, Lucian, what if you present the big picture project plan, and then Michael, maybe you can present the LabVIEW um, project plan you're thinking. Does that make sense? Any, any changes to the big, big view project plan, Lucian? Um, yeah, so all of you guys have gotten my email at this point, um, just kind of outlining what I think that we should be able to get done yep. by this summer. Um, I kind of had to take into account the fact that Ari and Andy, um, you know, they have certain schedules that they have to work around. Mm -hmm. And given the kind of hours that they're able to put in and the time frame that we have, I'm pretty sure that our, like that, that project plan that I emailed out is a pretty like ambitious and good goal that I think that we should be able to achieve. We all, you know, uh, work the way that you know, we, we've said that we can. Okay. And it's so ambitious, it's ambitious, but it's doable. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, obviously if, if it looks like we're doing well and, and we're getting things done ahead of schedule, then I'm definitely open to the idea of adding more things in. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to be doing this whole summer is I'm just going to be adding features into the back end that's going to allow us to implement things quicker. 
So just kind of like fleshing out different features and functionalities that hopefully will, um, you know, if, if time permits, we'll be able to implement them as quick as possible. Terrific, Lucy. And yeah, so, I mean, the big, the huge project for this summer is, you know, reform the lab view. Mm -hmm. That's a major endeavor to take on, mm -hmm. um, but it's gonna have a huge payoff. So that's definitely going to be the big target for this summer. Okay. Uh, Michael, before we hand the ball to you, um, I registered your interest in recruiting a uh, programmer. I put some feelers out. Um, I'd like to see how we go for a meeting or two with Ari and Andy. And then, um, um, and then, I'll try to adjust as quickly as we can if we need extra programming help. But I, I registered your concern. And so I'm, it's on my to-do list. Is uh, Shin Shin gonna help out with the LabVIEW at all or? Uh, well, on the UI side. Okay, cause I, um, yeah, I took that into account, so. Great, not, not so much on the programming side, on the graphic design side. Unless, unless since then you, you know, you want to take on learning React and Java, JavaScript. Uh, that's how much, all how much programming do you know, Shin Shin? No, no. I don't know much. Yeah. I okay. would like to learn. Yeah. yeah, I think we can, um, we can try to incorporate you as much as possible. Great, great. Uh, okay. All right, Michael. Um, so you said you had a chance to look at Gillen's architecture for sure, and then you looked at her code. And any conclusions? To, does the project look bigger or smaller than you thought after looking at Gillen's code? Or um, so she did a, a decent amount. Uh -huh. I won't. She did a decent uh, job, at least getting the baseline. Yep going so i i lost your share screen um currently the current state is that all the pages are there i had to do some adjustments to like actually make it work uh -huh. um so you can go through to this view everything's blank currently none of these buttons work yeah um, but you can still cycle through the pages fantastic, fantastic. um so, so the main tasks are really just populating these fields uh, and making them work mm -hmm. um, with respect to uh, an updated document I've been working on in the past few days. Uh -huh. um, and the crux of it is really just creating a screen as such, uh, enabling adding a UI for the user to edit fields and then um, actually linking that to the back end so that it sticks and so that users can um, actually edit the content of their profile. Yeah. So it's basically split up into three parallelized um, tracks, I suppose you could call them. Um, I think currently the four-week schedule may be a bit ambitious. Uh, it was a bit tight, fitting everything into mm -hmm. four weeks, mm -hmm. um, which is why I said having a third programmer would help a lot mm -hmm. um so okay this is the current state of things mm -hmm. um i'd like to number one distribute these tasks mm -hmm. um, and i can elaborate a bit more on each of them mm -hmm. unfortunately andy's not here so it's i guess he's going to be stuck with you know whatever he gets um yeah basically uh basically the a column and the b column are the main difficult ones. I think Shin Shin, because you're a bit new, we can start with assigning you the C column if you're happy to work. If not, it'll probably be assigned to um, someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Um, Lucian, do you have the time and interest to um, get involved in some of this front end coding in addition to the database design? 
Uh, yeah, I can definitely get involved. Um, okay. I'm pretty rusty on like front end stuff, but it should be pretty easy to pick back up. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, all right. I, I have on my um, on my radar, Michael. We want to make sure we have the right. Yeah, we have the horses um, lined up to to, um, to execute your plan. So um, let me let me think a little bit more about that. I'm beginning to get a pre better appreciation of the scope now. Yeah, because mm -hmm. also because you know the current schedule is do it in a month. This task needs to be done in a week. So yeah, that's. Yeah. I hope I am conveying that. Yeah, yeah. You, and you've divided this into four weeks? Yeah, according to Lucian's plan, the lab view needs to be done by August 1st. Okay, got it, got it. Unless you're willing to make adjustments to that plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely feel like it should be done by, at the absolute latest, like August 7th, so that we have like a week to fully, you know, integrate it and debug it. Yeah, so here. yeah, yeah. Here. I put I put down uh, July thirtieth as our kind of like soft deadline to be able to like feel good about having it done. Great, great. And it also allows us to do other stuff because Ari and Andy like uh, you know they have other tasks that they were interested in doing, and so if we spend all summer on you know the lab view then we really don't have time to do anything else mm -hmm. i think that the one one thing is achievable it's just that uh some weeks maybe it may be a bit um harder than others and i think mm -hmm. just having a bit more wiggle room with um we have would help a bit mm -hmm. that's just my yeah, two totally. cents yeah okay um lucian it would be great if you could fill in uh on the difficult weeks or the, um, you know, or if we get, start to get behind, um, that would be a lot easier than bringing a new person up to speed. Um, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, you know, even if we yeah. have to sacrifice some of the um, database design for future applications, if we start to get behind, um, maybe you can step in, Lucian. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Um, it's also possible, Michael, that uh, Steve may have some time. I don't think, if I'm being frank, I don't think Steve had, would really, I don't think it's worth his time to like do all this cosmetic stuff at the. Really? Okay. It's Thanks. like this yeah. is really meant for like a newer person. Um, they're specifically designed to be more cosmetics. Um, so they familiarize themselves with the code base. Great, um, great, great. Okay. Let's Thank um. You. All right. Let's just table the C column for now. They're not necessarily essential for the functionality, and they can definitely like be squeezed into the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. But just keep your eye out, um. Because they are still kind of essential. They just don't need to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we still have Andy and Ari. Um. Andy's not here, so Ari, uh, you're gonna be able to get first pick on all these tasks. Um, the way it works is that each row is one week, so A1 and B1 can be done in the same week. Um, but every row of tasks has to be completed after the row above it is done. Like you can't link the bio screen to the back end if you don't have the bio screen created. Great. Um, also, it's recommended uh, that um, some of them stay together. So, like, I'd like the person whoever creates the bio screen to work on linking it to the back end. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, so, Ari, I think it's up to you to decide whether you want to go down the A column or the B column. The A column is mainly just creating a screen and then making it functional so that data is stored in the database. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes for the bio screen and the project screen. Uh, the B column does a little bit of um, 
stuff with comments and likes in the beginning and login. So I don't know who worked on that before, but it might be logical to have them continue doing that. Yeah. And then it finishes off yeah, creating yeah. the skill screen. Yeah. Andy has been working on the likes. Yeah. Andy worked on the comments and likes system. Okay. In that case, would you like to just choose yeah. all these four? Yeah. That um, yeah. I think it sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, that makes it easy. Yep. And when Andy gets back. Yep. Um, I'll complete those. Okay. Um, Can you explain to Ari what week one is involved and also explain to Andy because I'm recording this, so I'll send it to him. Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to reach out to everybody who's working on the project to elaborate more. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I have an updated spec of what the lab should look like and i'll also add some more comments i think of like doing a one-on-one -on -one. i'll reach out to you guys later after the meeting for this mm -hmm. um and i can go into more depth about what the first week task entails fantastic, fantastic. um yeah uh so i guess the c column is in question for now mm -hmm. um i have a question for ari and i guess shin shin um do you guys prefer Google Docs or like Google Drive for some of these things? Because if edits happen, I I would I probably can't like resend another email like sending this doc. So, do you guys prefer Google Docs or do you have like any preferences between Drive and Dropbox or whatnot? I have a strong preference for Dropbox because everything we do right now is in Dropbox, and there's a lot of links on our website uh, to Dropbox. But um, if Google Docs is quick and dirty uh, for this, and we can, you know, we can, we can, we can do Google Docs. Mm -hmm. What's your pre with, preference, Sinsin? Uh, I'm fine with either. Uh, Michael, why don't you choose? Uh, I'd like it to be chosen by the people that are developing the app, so Ari, Andy, and Shinshin. Great, great. Because they're, they're, they're the main ones that are going to be looking at this great, um, document great. weekly to weekly. Good call. Good call. All right. Your preference, Google Docs, Dropbox? Well, I have the most experience with uh, Google Docs, but I'm fine with uh, Dropbox too if everything else is in Dropbox. Uh, I think so we can just start with Google Docs and at the end of the summer, I can just download everything and just upload it to Dropbox if that makes you feel better. Yep. Oh, yeah. Fun. Because I don't, I don't know if Dropbox has like live editing of like uh, Word documents. It does, it does. But um, I feel uh, like it yeah. might have been a bit clunkier than Google Docs. Um, I don't know. It gets better reviews than Google Docs actually, uh, for ease of use and um, uh, and security even. Um, but okay, I'll I'll look into it. That's oh. another issue. If uh, let's do Google Docs. I like your suggestion. Um, let's do Google Docs, and then at the end of the summer, Michael, if we need to, we'll put it all on Dropbox. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I think so that, so we'll do Google Drive for now. Google um, Drive and Google Docs. Yeah, yeah. And then we already have the Slack, so yeah, we'll be using Slack throughout the summer, so make right. sure you guys check your messages for that. Yeah. Um, let's see what else I have on the agenda. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Andy's not here, so I can't. Uh -huh. Hopefully, he gets up to speed. Yeah, I mean, um, just if you have a message for Andy, uh, yeah, I'll probably just send it on Slack later. Okay, all right, and uh, but you can give him the big picture here because I'm going to send him this recording. Okay. Um, what else do I have? I'm wondering if it'd be productive to have a weekly check-in on Wednesday because of the pace of the schedule. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ari and Chinchin, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on 
like a midweek check-in just in case like yeah, you need yeah. any help? Yeah, I think it would be better than only once a week. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a quick thing. Um, mainly just like for quick questions. Uh, are you? What time are you free on Wednesdays generally? Um, well, I guess uh, in the afternoons from three. Would um because I. Okay. Well, I get out of work at like six thirty p.m. What Western time? So. I don't know if I don't know how late you're willing to stay up, but uh, well, I have no problem with the meetings being late, but I'm not sure about uh, uh, the others. So, since okay. he's also in California, and Andy, I think uh, can do nine o'clock. All right, let's um tentatively do nine p.m. then. Okay, I'll write that down. Nine p.m. on Wednesday. Great. Yeah. Um, in addition, um, I'm wondering if he, uh, I might be productive to do some weekly tutorials real quick. Sure. After the meeting, just that usually it would help with um, getting people up to speed for the incoming task. Yeah. Um, yep. So I don't know if you guys are okay with this, like right after this meeting, I just have a quick little rundown of some CSS stuff. Yes. Because uh, I think Ari, you're going to be working on, yeah, creating a live view screen. So I can teach some tricks that might yeah. help make it easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully we can make that like a weekly thing on Sunday right after the meeting. So that it gets you up to speed so that you can work on the task immediately. How's that sound? Sure, I think it sounds great. Okay, so 9.30ish PM. Um, and I guess the last one, last two things. Um, number one, a weekly work session. Uh, usually, I guess for some of the clubs I'm in, if people are running into trouble, there's like, I guess, a weekly office hours type uh, meeting where you can just hop on a Zoom link and just work on the project. And if you need help, I'm like right there on the Zoom link. Um, I'm wondering if there's any interest for that, mainly Ari and Shinshin, or Lucian too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea. I found okay. that like last summer when we would do things like that, just work together in like an open Zoom call, I feel like we were a lot more productive. Yeah. What um what day are we looking at? Are we we could do like Sunday right before the meeting or Yeah, I'm free like any time during the like week or weekend. I really don't have like any okay. hard commitments. So I can work with whatever. Yeah, I'll um all right, it sounds like people are generally interested, so I'll just I'll handle the logistics of that um, right after this meeting. I, I'd vote for eight o'clock on Sunday uh, before the meeting. I mean, it's easier to sort of yeah yeah everything in one group, even though it's a two and a half hour or three uh, even three hour session. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's just my main concern that it might just be too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if other people are fine with it, we'll um yeah we'll look into it. Um, yeah. Last thing is uh, one-on-ones. I'll reach out to people um, after this meeting. For those, just um, keep your Slack messages open and please reply. Great. Um, Great. I think that's all the administrative tasks I have. Great. Uh, Michael, uh, may I yeah. encourage everyone by Michael's suggestion to please reply. It's really helpful if you just say, got it, uh, so that we know you've read it. Um, I appreciate a lot when people get back immediately or as quickly as possible, just if, you know, short note. So it's part of being, uh, yeah, it's part of the teamwork spirit and, and being professional. Okay. Yep. yep. Um... Okay, another really important thing we need to do is like set up the version control. Um, 
Ari is, and he's not here, but Ari, I'm wondering if there's anything that needs to be pushed to the old um, repository, because I know you guys were working on some lab view code, or was that mainly Andy? Um, well, I was also working in my own branch, but I think Andy got quite more far ahead than I did. What were you so, guys working on? Um, rewriting the lab view to use like the API oh, class okay. and okay. explain. The so file. no, like no major features that no just reformatting. No. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. No, no changes. Okay. So yeah, let me share a screen. That's okay. That makes my job a lot, a lot easier. Um, so basically the state of things is that the new repository, we're not going to be touching the master branch as much, um, this summer yet, because we don't want to deploy an unfinished lab view. We have, I guess like a half functioning one existing. Yep. Um, I've created a new branch called Michael slash new lab view. Um, so... Ari, if you could, um, I want you to like pull from this branch and then you're going to be editing this branch basically because it has all like the skeleton code of the new lab view, um, all these new pages. And so you can work off of that so you don't have to like do any of everything from scratch basically. Um, Shinshin, if you're interested in this, I'll probably reach out to you separately just so um, we can keep Ari uh, uh, get, get him started soon. Um, so Ari, if you could just open up Git and like, you could share screen too if you want to, but I just need to make sure that you can at least run the new version. Sure. Um, uh yeah. Let me just show Yeah, of course. Yep. Be instead of master, you know, yeah, master. yeah, yep, you got it. Uh, I think you need to add the Michael slash in the beginning. Um, like the name of the branch is Michael slash new lab view. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. I think control C usually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, it might take a while. Um, also, Andy's not here, so I guess um, let me know by tomorrow if it if you can. Oh, does it? Okay, try npm installing. I don't know. I don't know. This might take a while, so that's why I'm concerned.
Yeah. Um, yeah, just let it run in the background. Uh, we'll get back to it um, either after the tutorial or maybe uh, another time. Um, okay. Right. You guys can see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So because the new lab view is like very, like the UI is a bit complicated. You can imagine trying to format this in a Word document would be very difficult, like having the profile on the left and having all these um, items on the right. Um, CSS provides us some tools to like easily do this. And which is what I found to be namely like uh, something called CSS grid. Um, so hopefully you guys can follow along. Um, uh, you can, uh, Ari, if you could like create a new uh, HTML document. Um, let me know when you have it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll just also create mine right now too. Okay, so I'm going to make an index.html file. Um, I can also post this stuff in the chat too. So just copy and paste that. And then let me know when you have it saved. And then once you do also go into the directory and just double click it. Uh, let me know if you can open it up in the browser. If you add like some text. Yeah, let me know when you have gone to that point, Ari, or who else is, whoever else is following along. Mm -hmm. Yep. You got it? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, also, create a new CSS document. Uh, just add some like test code in it and then call it style.css. And then if you refresh the page, uh, let's say you added a background color, it should um, change the page. And let me know if that also worked for you. Yep, that worked. Okay, cool. So let's just change this back to white. Um, we can also add some padding too, uh, just to make the formatting a bit better. If we refresh our page, we should have some more spacing and the background should be white. Um, and then finally, let's encapsulate this test text in a, in a div. Um, let me know if you got to that point. So um, quick uh, comment, Michael. Since yeah. you've done a personal website, and uh, but doesn't have a lot of experience with CSS and divs yet. That was our next step. But um, uh, since then, just hold on to your suspenders here. We're going yeah, um, fast, but um, I can I, I can wait um, for her to catch up. It's I'll just share my screen again. Uh, well, I don't know if you're doing this since then, but I recommend you just watch this. It's a great learning experience. What Michael is doing, it's kind of the next step of where we were going to go with your personal website. Go on, Michael. Uh, let's. Okay. Are you uh, good? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, finally, let's also just encapsulate the div in a section. Um, a section is like not really that different from a div. It's just use. It just uses a different name, uh, so that when you're reading HTML code, it it uh, makes a bit more sense. Um, and then let's also just copy and paste this and make a, a couple of these. Let's make um, nine of them. And then let me know, you refresh your page, you should see nine of these. Let me know when you're good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so here's a problem, right? Uh, currently all these divs are stacked on top of each other. And let's say we wanna make 
um, an actual grid where it's like nine by nine. Uh, we need to use some CSS tools to uh, adjust the formatting. When divs are created, if you right click and click uh, inspect, uh, you can see that um, they generally, hold on. Oh yeah, make sure you also add your closing brackets. That's my bed. Um, yeah, so if you hover over uh, the div in the inspect element, you see how they, the, the blue border shows that they go all the way to the end of the screen. Yeah. Um, the reason is because of this property called display. Um, display means that when it's block, it doesn't allow any other elements to sit next to it. So you can see that if I change this to inline block up here, and you, also I changed it for heat in, uh, in this div, they would now sit next to each other. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. So that's one way to do things, right? If we add a property for div, we change the display to inline block and we refresh the page. Um, they would all be sitting next to each other and that's great. And if that's all we wanted to do, that'd be very useful. But let's say we wanted it to be like a three by three. Then maybe we'd have to add like some break lines um, here and here. And if we refresh it, that would give us a three by three. And that'd be good, but it's not necessarily scalable. So you'd, you can imagine if you want to add more sections, it would just uh, clutter the code, adding all yeah. these like additional break lines. So let's not do that. Um, and let's also remove this property. Uh, also for the sake of um, formatting, we can also just add some properties that make it look a bit nicer. Um, I'll add a border just so that stuff gets formatted nicely. And also, yeah, that should be good, I think. Okay. Um, let me know you've gotten to this point. I am. Okay, cool. So what CSS Grid allows us to do is kind of like flexibly design a template for how we want um, these divs to be shaped. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find the parent of all these supposedly grid cells, right? So you can imagine each of these divs is a grid cell. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, if the, each of these divs are a cell, then the grid parent is, would be this section. So if I make a new property for the section, and I say that this the display is grid, um, that means that this section tag becomes a grid and all of its cells are the children. So this div, this div, this div, even if I add like another property like a span, um, that'll also be a grid cell. And if I refresh the page, you'll, you'll think that nothing has happened yet, right? But if I inspect, you'll see that there's this little grid icon next to the section. And if I hover over it, you'll see that these purple dotted lines have showed up. Um, if I hover over the section tag. So let me know if you've gone to that point. Yeah. Cool. So what this does is that the section tag is now a grid and we can flexibly set what um, formatting we want to have. And we do that with a variety of CSS properties. Um, so if I, let's say, change these to be numbers now just so that it makes more sense what's going on. Refresh the page, nothing has happened, but um, now they're all different uh, labels. And let's uh, do, um, let's set a property called grid template uh, columns. And let's say we want a three by three. Uh, if we want a three by three, there are three columns. So let's 
do one FR, one FR, one FR. We do that three times. So what this does is that it defines a rule for the columns. The amount of times we type this out is the number of columns. You see that we typed out one FR three times, one, two, three, which means that there will be three columns. Uh, the actual text of this specifies like the dimensions. Um, FR stands for like fractional. So one FR is like one fractional component. And since there are three of them, that's like one third of the page. Okay. So here's the, here's the magic. If you refresh the page, um, we get three perfectly uh, even, evenly sized columns, right? Let's say yeah. we want to have two of them. You can delete one of them, and then we'll have two columns, and they'll both be equally spaced. Um, and you'll notice, because we have an odd number, one of these is missing. So the reason that CSS Grid is so powerful is because it does a lot of that um, tedious work of defining things and allows you to just define a few rules, and the CSS Grid just infers the rest. Um, likewise, if you want four columns, we do one FR four times, you refresh the page, and now we have um, four columns. And of course, if you do one column for whatever reason, it goes back to a simple stack of nine divs. Michael, may I chime in a couple of Yeah. Thoughts? This yeah. is uh, a really great tutorial. I love what you're doing. Since then, this is relevant to the table format that you used. It's the next step. It's the more sophisticated, more scalable way uh, to create the table format that you created in your personal website. Um, so uh, thank you, Michael, for, yeah. for guiding through this. This is, this is fantastic. Yep, yep. Um, and then real quick, if I don't want these to take up the entire page. I can also define how much um, space I want them to take up. So this time it's three columns, and each of these columns is 30 pixels. So if I refresh the page, I, I, yeah, that's, um, that's what 30 pixels looks like. I could even up it to be 100 pixels for one of the columns, and you'll see that. Now the first column is 100 pixels. The next two are 30 pixels. Um, so that's like the real power of CSS Grid is that I can flexibly um, design these templates. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things. Um, I can also define like where I want the text to be centered. So I believe if I go to the div, you'll see that they're all just right to the left. I believe if I go, um, if I use the justify content field for the div, so whatever I put in the div will apply to all the grid cells. Um, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I think it's end. No, it's probably right. Oh, shoot. Yeah, it might be text align. Yeah, that works. Um, so anything you apply to the grid cell just applies to the grid cell. I'm just going to delete that and go back. Um, you also increase the padding. OK. All right. Um, so let's change this back to 1FR, 1FR, 1FR. So the next step we have is, um, let's change this back to two columns. You can imagine for something as complicated as the bio screen, this might not look like a grid right now, right? Because it seems like we have what one component for the avatar and then one component for the nickname and then another one for the hometown, country, goals, hobbies, and heroes. So this might not really look like a neat grid where each cell is even. But if we compose grid cells, we can actually replicate um, this uh, formatting. Uh, yeah. So let's go back into our code. Um, let's first divide this into like two halves, right? The left half being the avatar, the right half being, um, you know, the information. So let's start if start off with two divs. We'll call this the avatar. We'll call this the info. And if we set yeah, our grid template to be 1FR, 1FR, we'll have two columns. Um, now, let's go deeper in one level. 
you see that the info section has a nickname section, but also underneath it, it has uh, a couple of fields where on the left side, you have a um, the field name and then on the right side, you have the field value. So let's go into the info section and flesh it out a bit more. We'll have, um, let's do a div where it has hometown, right? And then we can also have a div where it says uh, value for now. And let's also mm, put this inside a um, div, which will be like kind of the wrapper, I guess. So if we have hometown, we also have country. And then we have uh, goals, let's say, and I guess hobbies for now. And then let's also just add some IDs just to make this a bit more organized. Um, so we'll call this um, div ID equal to um, bio content. So obviously if you refresh the page, it won't be correct now because we haven't defined enough stuff, but you can see that when we define this grid, you can already notice that we have two nice halves and inside the second half, we are starting to have these um, neat little um, uh, formatting things come to fruition. And then we just have to define yep. one more rule because right now you notice that hometown is stacked on top of value, whereas we want them to be side by side, right? Um, mm -hmm. So because the each of these are a cell, let me actually just also put them on new lines too. Each of these are a grid cell. We want the grid parent to be the bio content. So if we apply a grid rule to bio content, it'll make these cells move around. So Let's um, define a rule for bio content to be grid. And then since we want two halves, we're gonna do grid template columns, one FR, one FR. If we refresh the page, you'll, you'll notice that now hometown and value are right next to each other. Um, cool. Very cool. And that looks a lot like what we're already trying to go for for this bio screen. Yeah. Albeit there's a little bit, little bit less formatting and you can make it look a lot nicer, but the structure of the page is, is kept intact. And the real important thing is that when we resize the page, we don't lose the structure. Whereas if you were to use other CSS techniques, you could imagine like maybe the hometown in the valley would like start breaking onto a new line. Uh, with CSS grid, um, there's so much that the web page is doing for you that you can just design this, you can just define this one rule and it'll infer the rest. Wow. Um, so hopefully, Ari, that helps a lot. Um, and I especially want to emphasize that you should, I would highly advise using this for the lab view because these um, formatting, the formatting gets a bit tricky, um, especially once you like get into these forms yeah. where you're trying to submit things. If you're to like not use CSS grid, it could be a headache <laughs> if I'm, <laughs> uh, if I'm uh, as, uh, speaking from experience. Um, yeah. So hopefully that helps a lot. Um, Highly recommend using CSS Grid. I think I can, I'll send you guys a video that goes into a bit more depth and some more tricks uh, that I've, um, that I've uh, learned. Um, and hopefully it makes the week one task, which is uh, just creating the page for you. Um, hopefully it makes that a lot smoother. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Tremendous, tremendous, Michael. Um... Yeah. Oh, also, Ari, could you just show me what your web page looks like, just so I know that you have the code template to go off of? Uh, my... Yeah, could you just share your screen for the yeah. HTML page? Great. Great, yeah, looks good. So, uh, yeah, make sure you save the source code so you can have it as a reference. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Good going, Ari. Um, Michael, most, most excellent. Um, okay. Uh, since and this is uh, um, the beauty of CSS is that you define the rules in one place and you can use those rules throughout your website. Whereas what we were doing, it's a lot, a lot of work to do this in, in the table uh, uh, code you are using. But um, uh, if we can just have two minutes before we adjourn, Michael, or you have other things you wanted to do? I just um, wanted to show you two new planets. Yeah, go ahead. Sinsen's planet. All right. Sinsen, I'm going to show your planet. Um, this is Sinsen's planet and her lab view. So this is great. All these graphics were made on her own. And we have another intern who's created um, this planet. On members site, let me just get rid of this. It gets down here. Members. So I just want you to know that we have interns that are loving building planets with their own graphics. So Michael, what you've created here, I think is really spectacular. Um, since in any, any thoughts on when you created your planet, um, it did it, it had your attention creating your own planet. And... Since then, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, did, what, when you know. created your own planet, uh, any any reactions to that? Were you? Were you happy with the results? Did, did, is there more you wanted to do or did it have your attention for how many, how many hours did you put on developing your planet? Actually, um, yeah, I'm not really sure how many hours I put in, but I did think that it was really cool being able to like design practically everything because I know that like in other games or like, um, yeah, anything else, it's usually they have like pre-existing um, like labs or things you can put in, but it's really cool that you can upload your own. Yeah, great. And have such flexibility to place them. Great, okay, so I just wanted to um, pat the team on the back for creating something that uh, already I think is very, um, very, very cool. All right, Lucia and Michael, thank you, thank you. Nice work, very nice work. I really like the methodical way you're planning this. Um, Ari, right, thanks for joining. To be continued Wednesday, nine o'clock. Is that right? Um, yes. Okay. Yep, sounds good. All right, Michael, thank you. Really nice job. Okay. Okay, guys. To be continued. Yep. Have a good night. Great. Good night, Michael. Have a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.